Next question is from Nurse Buckmaster. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> what yeah. are good guidelines like for someone who wants to c- compete in a fitness show? Oh, uh, wow. Yeah, this, this, is your, this is your wheelhouse. Well, I think yeah. uh, this is a hard one, too, because to be honest with you, I think that a lot of people that get into competing get into it for the wrong reasons. Yeah, I remember you. You would always ta- you would often talk people out of it. I'd, yeah, mm-hmm. but many a lot of times uh, because I would get these people. It, it's becomes it's become very popular since Instagram. Yeah, I mean it's become the new uh, marathon. Like, How are they doing kind of, yeah. without uh, you know? Uh, are they still doing shows and everything? Um, I, I believe there. I believe competitions are going on. Still going yeah, on. Yeah, I don't know how they're doing it. I, but I believe they're they're still happening. Um, I'm not. I, you know me. I don't really follow that I world don't know. very you're, much. You're as close as I am. To I it, know. So. You know. I, I know people look to me to ask, and then I get questions around like people that are. I'm like, I don't follow anybody who's competing mm-hmm. right now. Um, you know, it would be a good question for you, Adam. Is because I want to get into what to do, but I think this would be a good question. What was your criteria? Yeah. For someone that you th- would then say, okay, you you can compete. Like, what would you at? What would you look for? Well, I, I think you have to have one a, a really good base uh, knowledge of exercise, right? So training, like mm-hmm. you should have like an idea of like the importance of programming and how you would phase it and, and mm-hmm. things like that. Like basic. You don't need to be like a you know a PhD or have a lot of experience there, but you should have some understanding of, of exercise and form and technique too, right? Because you're gonna go into this pushing the body to its limits in a lot of areas and training being one of those areas and you shouldn't be pushing and stretching it if you're still really learning the mechanics of a lot of fundamental movements mm-hmm. so i think you should have a really good base solid base of training uh and then you you i think you have to have a really good knowledge and understanding of both nutrition and your metabolism and that's what i saw it's and i'm speaking more it's both sexes but i'm speaking more to uh i i told more women's bikini girls know than I did men's physique men. And that's because in the, in the, in the women's competing community, a lot of these girls were very low calorie going into this idea in the first place. Mm -hmm. Like I, I, I've talked about a good girlfriend of mine who I, I wouldn't let her compete for over a year of getting coaching from me before I would let her compete. And then she went in and did it, uh, without, without me. And then she got she was she was fatter on stage than what she was before body fat percentage because she lost and muscle and it just it boggled her mind even though she looked better to her right because she sl- she got smaller and her weight came down but it was exactly what I was trying to explain to her I said this the reason why you did this is because you didn't you weren't in a healthy place metabolism wise going into this yeah you need room to go down yeah you and and most most especially girls that are interested and by the way I'm, there, there there are guys in this category too but i did speak to way more girls to the, have this conversation than guys if you're in a place already uh, and you exercise and train and, and try and lose body fat and, or build muscle and you're only eating 1300 to 1800 calories that's a pretty low place to be uh, already and then and knowing that you're nowhere ready for stage you know mm. your stage body fat percentage uh, you're just not, and what, uh, and unfortunately we're, we're in this time where these coaches that are hustling online are trying to make money and they'll take everybody and anybody. Now I wasn't in that place. We had mind pump. I we were doing other things. I didn't need the money. And so when I saw somebody like this, I said, would say, no, like I, I won't coach you for a show, uh, at, at, you know, 1500 calories right now. And you're telling me you want to do a show in 12 weeks and you want me to get you ready. Like I'm telling you right now, I'm going to destroy your metabolism trying to get you there. Mm. Uh, and I would be a dude. Now, what about like their, their body image and their relationship with food and themselves? Well, like, that. I can imagine it, the pressure of mm. getting judged by your body and how you look and constantly focusing on how you look. Yeah. If you don't have a, if you're not secure with yourself, woo, that could do a number on you. Well, the the truth is though, that's also, I mean, most of the ones that are the best of the best in the in that space are extremely insecure mm. about their bodies, and that insecurity is what drove them to be uh, competitive and to be consistent. Mm. It's because they are, they have deep insecurities of being teased by, for looking a certain way or being fat or whatever it might have been that drove them into fitness and uh, they just happen to be have another level of dis- discipline than the average person and mm-hmm. that's what's led them into competing I, I mean i would like to talk all those people out of it uh, but the reality is most of us uh have some sort of insecurities that we're still battling when it comes to that and i guess 
uh, before you get in, you need to be very aware of your own insecurities. So I, I, I think that I've tackled most of my own, um, but I'm, I still am aware of that, right? Like now you I'm, competed as like a good, as an adult, like you were, yeah, you've 30, been doing so, it for a while. I was already 30 something years old. I've been, a, I've been already a trainer for over 10 years. Like, so I had a lot of experience already with body image issues and relationship with food and exercise, my own issues that I had that drove me to taking anabolic steroids and trying to be a bigger guy and all that stuff. So I'd already worked through all of that. And when I got into competing, I, I'd never even had a desire to really do it. It was really just to build a business. It was really to gain authority because and unfortunately we live in a very superficial world and we're in, a, in the probably one of the most superficial businesses that people want to see that you can do that yourself and show I, I so I wanted to do it with no coach and no team and prove that I could do this and I also wanted to show that I could do it as healthy as I could until I had to cross that line so yeah, it was like what two I remember you, the the show you did when we were all working together at first I think it was like a few weeks out and you said okay now I'm going to get into the state the unhealthy part yeah of the this. sport of it that's why yeah. I, I would tell the audience because like, I would document and talk to the you know my my Instagram and YouTube as I was going through it and I would let the audience know that okay everything I've done up to this point has been pretty health healthy relatively healthy the way I have slowly reduced body fat and slowly reduced calories I was still in a very I mean I got ready for every show and never dropped calories lower than 2500 calories it was a pretty decent place to be, especially for somebody who's trying to- And that's to get, at the very end. Yeah, it's the very end. Right? The peak goes in the 4,000, right? Yeah, it's right? pretty so, manageable. Right. So I, I would tell them that. So from a- And I wasn't doing excessive cardio. I was just stepping to get more movement and changing my programming to see the consistent results. But then there would get to a point when you get to that final two weeks- and I'm trying to shred every last ounce. That's when you pull all those crazy things out. That's where I would do two hours of cardio. That's where I would count cal calories in a, in a you know dangerously low place to be and manipulating water and sodium. And I'm playing with all these things to achieve this look. That's not health. It's not a representation of health. It's what looks great on stage and tanned up mm -hmm. and on the lights and on the covers of magazines. And I would be very transparent with my audience and say, hey, I'm I'm now entering, I'm now cross this this line of this is no longer healthy. I'm gonna push my body to the extreme limits to try and present my physique the craziest I could present. So would you say the first step then is for somebody who wants to compete is are you is your metabolism in a in a good place? Are you eating a good amount of calories? And you're and you're already relatively lean. I would imagine that, right? I, yeah. I, 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 I know this, and the reason why I said earlier that they're treating it like marathons. When I back in the day as a trainer, a lot of times people would sign up for marathons as a way to get in shape. They didn't work out. They didn't do anything. They're like, I want to get in shape. You know what will help me motivate me? If I sign up for a marathon. That, that's people are doing that with shows Yeah, now. that's what I would get yeah. that a lot. I would get uh, you know, a girlfriend that would say, hey, me and my girlfriend want to, you know, we have a competition to see who can get in the best shape, and we are going to do this show that's coming up in three or four months. Uh, would you help us, uh, you know, get ready for it, die for it? And then I'd like start asking their experience and what they'd been currently doing and how many calories, and they're like, no clue. No clue of like how many oh, calories. get on stage. Yeah, they have no clue. But they, like you said, it, it's become so trendy and popular to do these that everyone's like, oh, this is a, a what a great way to get myself in the best shape of my life. Worst way ever. I know. And, yeah. and, and the truth is you made do exactly what my friend did where she went out on her own and, and, and she thought she got in the best shape of her life because she was the smallest she'd ever been. She knew she dieted harder than she ever had in her life. And she got up on stage. She did it, was proud of herself. And I had her dunk. But I wouldn't let her see it till after the show because I knew it would have just fucking discouraged her completely. It would have ruined the way she presented herself up on stage. And afterwards, showed her and showed her that her body fat percentage, although she was down, I think she was almost 30 pounds or down 28, 30 pounds, her body fat percentage went up. And even psychologically, she thought she was in, in better shape. I was like, no, you're in way worse shape. Your metabolism is now slower than it's ever been and your higher body fat percentage, even though... Yeah. You have 30 pounds of weight off the scale off you. That is really muscle. hard for people to to make that right. Yes. It was hard for her, and she's looking at it. Yeah. Like, she's looking at me. I don't understand. Now, all the coaching and talking leading up to that yeah. from, you know, from me still didn't totally click. I For me personally, I, you know, I, I never competed, and I worked a little bit with some competitors. I didn't do pre-contests, you know, co competition, nutrition, and training. I just, I always stayed out of that. Mm -hmm. But I did know a lot of people that competed. And I don't know a single person that made it out of that space without some issues that they developed. Really. I don't know a single person. Because you're so focused on how you... 
focusing on just your appearance anyway can cause issues. But when you have a competition and you know you're going to display yourself, and not only that, but you get critiqued mm -hmm. on how you look. Oh, you're you're yeah. you're a little a lot soft of people can't here. Handle that. Yeah. Oh, your muscles not big enough here. Oh, yeah. your glutes don't look. It's not good for you to focus on that so much. It really can develop a very bad relationship with exercise. Now that being said, okay, I also think it was one of the the greatest times in my life. I also think that it it um, has attributed to some of the the, the greatest knowledge gains. As being a coach, mm. the the perspective it gave me to to take it to that level, um, I had a blast doing it. It was very very cool to see what my body was capable to push those limits and those boundaries. Um, so I see there is a lot of positive, but I also think that, and I love this question because I do think there's a lot of prerequisites. I do think that. You should be in that place. I, I I know I'm not alone. I'm not the only person that was self aware by 30 and had trained for a while and had a good diet. I mean, if you got a if you have a healthy metabolism and you know you do, you know you're eating a, a good amount of calories, right? So you know you have a, a healthy metabolism. You've been training long enough to understand programming to, or you're going to hire a coach to do that for you. And you have a good relationship with body, knowing that you this is not a representation of me and who I am. It's just my my physique that I'm manipulating, mm. and you can remove yourself from that, and you. You don't you don't get wrapped up in that identity if you can do those things fucking a i think it's awesome mm. i think it's a, it's an amazing those are, those are some big things though they are those yeah. are big yeah. those are big things to tackle and uh and i and it's and not a lot of people are aware enough to even know if they are in that place um but yeah if you are and you and you do feel confident in that man i, I think uh competing is a blast and i think it can be I think you can do it and completely step out of it and remove yourself. Mm. Like I, I mean, I had no problem. I couldn't wait to walk away from it. You know? Yeah. <laughs> I know. I was there when you did. Oh, yeah.